Understanding the pain points that tokenization solves is a key requirement for any issuer, asset owner, or investor seeking to enter this space. For issuers and asset owners, tokenization is a process that takes time and has real costs. So the benefits to doing this must be clear before diving in. In this course, I'll explain several key benefits to tokenization. These include enhanced liquidity, disintermediation, faster settlement and lower transaction costs, reduced cost of carry, lower minimum investment thresholds through fractionalization, fraud prevention, automated compliance, and conditional payments. Whew, that's a lot. Are you ready? Let's first talk about liquidity. What is it? Essentially, liquidity is the degree to which a market allows asset buyers and asset sellers to trade in and out of the market with low trade execution costs. Illiquid markets are markets in which asset owners find it hard to sell their assets without incurring a discount on the selling price. Many factors categorize liquid markets, but one of these factors is most relevant to our course today. How easy it is for buyers and sellers to access the marketplace and exchange assets. Blockchains can contribute significantly to asset liquidity because blockchains are a common digital infrastructure that token owners can use to authorize transfers between each other near instantaneously. For example, when Bitcoin owners wanted to make their Bitcoin more liquid and usable in decentralized finance applications, they tokenized their Bitcoin on the Ethereum network so that they could be liquid and usable across a wider variety of new services. We also see cases where financial institutions decide to tokenize a bond onto the Ethereum blockchain so that the asset is liquid and usable in Ethereum decentralized financial services. In this case, the bond is made more liquid in a token form because it is more easily tradable and could be used as collateral for other services. These perceived liquidity benefits can be a boost to distribution and sales interest. And as you'll see in our following course, other illiquid assets like real estate, commodities, or even biological assets have been tokenized to open up their liquidity. The next benefit on the list is disintermediation. As noted before, tokenization is the process of creating a digital representation of an asset, and it's often done to facilitate the capital raising process. In a typical tokenization security asset offering, there's a cost benefit that issuers can receive thanks to the disintermediation that's possible. But what and who is actually disintermediated? How does this save time and money? Let's break down the typical intermediaries involved in a transaction. Custodians, registrars, underwriters, sponsors, law firms, brokers, and more. Actually, you may be surprised to know that several of these key counterparties do still need to be involved in a tokenization transaction. You still need lawyers, and you still need people to help you sell and distribute the deal. What you don't need, however, is using old legacy technology and paperwork to register and manage the asset. For example, with digital tokens, the act of custodying an asset is much simpler than with traditional assets, so you don't need legacy paper-based custodians. You do need a secure digital wallet to hold your digital assets, though, and some vendors may provide this service and call themselves custodians. Also, with digital tokens, as the blockchain is the digital ledger of record for the assets, you don't need to use traditional share registrars to record the assets, which streamlines the overall process. This streamlining makes a huge positive difference for distribution and sales. Issuers can also choose the degree to which they want traditional brokers and distributors to participate. In the most disintermediated example, an issuer can run an offering on a platform and sell directly to investors without the use of a broker. In other more balanced examples, issuers can run a sale with allocation given to a broker who runs the deal alongside the issuer. Moving ahead, there are other additional benefits to tokenization that I'll go through. First off, real-time settlement is often highlighted as a key benefit of tokenization. What this means for issuers and investors is that any transfer of assets via a blockchain database is able to clear and settle within minutes rather than the days of legacy financial infrastructure. Real-time settlement is also what allows for a potentially more efficient post-trade infrastructure in equities markets. And that will most likely redefine what it means to be a central clearinghouse in the future. Faster settlement time and lower transaction costs are also the key benefits that have driven issuers to create digital fiat currencies like stablecoins that are able to settle cross-borders payments faster and cheaper than using banking infrastructure like SWIFT. Secondly, holding a valuable asset or commodity in digital form or transferring ownership in digital form allows you to reduce risks associated with physical holding or transport. For example, 
Imagine if you wanted to sell fine art to a buyer in a different country. Assuming the art is held in a third-party vault or warehouse, by transferring only the digital ownership token to the buyer and retaining the art in the vault, the buyer and the seller don't need to worry about physical logistics risks. This same advantage applies to other high-value commodities where buyers and sellers wish to trade ownership with each other but don't want to deal with the hassle of physical delivery. Thirdly, by reducing transaction costs and increasing digitalization, tokenization enables fractional investments. This means that a large investment lot size, say a minimum lot of equity purchases or a minimum investment in a private equity fund or a large house purchase, could be broken down into smaller investable chunks, creating lower minimum investment thresholds. There are a few other benefits on the risk management side, and then also on the payment side. Specifically, when you use a blockchain database to issue and manage tokens, the database is better able to prevent against unauthorized modifications to the data. Blockchains have this technical property known as data immutability, which means that because the data in the blockchain is linked together by cryptography, it's close to impossible to go back and revert or change any of these prior data entries maliciously. This property is incredibly important when you're recording data about asset balances. You don't want people to be able to fraudulently increase or decrease the assets in your overall balances. Another interesting advantage of tokenization is something we call auto-compliance. Auto-compliance is a feature that allows you to build in compliance checks in the token that prevent it from being used against a set of predetermined rules. So for example, if you're issuing private securities that are exempt from securities registration, uh, conditional on only, you know, for example, conditions like only accredited investors holding the securities or no more than a certain amount of investors holding the securities, then you can build in software code into the token that's able to automatically run pre-trade checks before the token is allowed to be transferred. And last but not least, conditional payments are one of the most exciting applications of tokens for the future. In this case, similar to the auto compliance example, in the token you can write specific rules into the asset token that allow transfers to get auto-triggered upon specific events happening. For example, you could build tokenized purchase order contracts, which you know, essentially are balance sheet assets, that auto trigger a locked up payment to suppliers once specific physical delivery conditions have been made. This has massive automation efficiency potential. It's also a good example to end on, as smart automation is one of the key hallmark benefits of tokenization that is attracting issuers and investors alike to invest in this space. In the next course, we'll be looking at what specifically we can tokenize.